Hey everybody, Booking is coming right up, but first, a little warning about the content, which you're about to hear. Uh, the topic of discussion, the uh, book that we're doing today, The Scarlet Letter, is a very uh, mature book. So I would just, if you're younger than maybe, I don't know, 13 or 14, ask your mom before you listen to this one. Or if you're a parent, maybe not the best one to listen to with your kids in the car, or listen as a family. Uh, I hope it's going to be a good discussion, but it's just going to be of the more uh, mature kind. So... Without further ado, the Scarlet Letter. Do 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 do. do. <laughs> Coming up next, booking in reads the Scarlet Letter. Hey everybody, and welcome to Booking It. I am your humble and eloquent host, Cooper Cobbs, and I am joined today by my three friends, Matthew Killingsworth. Howdy. Isaiah Ratsky. Hi. And I, Tammy and Tanner Lewis. Hello. Well, everybody, how are we doing today? Pretty good. We're doing good. Matthew, your audio quality is bad again. What is the deal with that? Mine is, yeah. So I feel like this does need a little explanation. I realized after we recorded last week that I never actually plugged in my microphone. He told us um, to, but he forgot to do it himself. Yeah, I was, I was too worried about them. I learned my lesson this week, although the computer I'm using this week doesn't have the right adapter to use the normal microphone. So this week I'm using regular earbuds, and so I apologize again for the poor audio. It'll be better next week, hopefully. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, gentlemen, I am 0-2 in our fantasy league, and I'm very sad. I'm 2-0. <laughs> yeah, and I'm 2-0. Going on three. I don't think what are you talking that. about? I'm going to beat you this week. Too bad. I'm already projected 10 points yes, ahead of you. Yes, but you were projected so to lose wrecked. to Thomo. That's true. Yeah, I was, and then I won like yeah, by a exactly. lot. <laughs> so then so why should you. I lose to you? Oh, man. This got uh, I don't think we ever really said it. I don't think we ever said it on mic, but uh, Matthew did beat me, if you couldn't tell. Uh, <laughs> it was by point three. I was very And mad. then I beat Matthew by like 50. The good news is Matthew's star running back is out for the year. So mine is yep. out for four weeks. Uh, that's not which is why I'm gonna that's, win. That's, yeah, okay. Alvin Kamara, let's, let's hey, go. Hey, hey, let's explain this to our audience. Isaiah has Dak Prescott. Okay, that is why he He's won by fifty 40 points. Forty points the day. Also, I have Literally. Christian McCaffrey and Devontae Adams, yeah. which are both injured right now. Yeah, it's tough. That's okay. I guess we should talk about the Scarlet Letter, guys. I guess so. Yep. Well. Isaiah, See, do you want to go- we were oh, we we weren't gonna do this book, but we were planning on doing uh, the Red Badge of Courage, which but, was a book we had to read a few weeks ago for school. But because of our uh, requests that we received on YouTube, um, we decided to go with this book because that is what people wanted. Oh, so yeah. and here I don't you think are. You guys were very keen on doing the Red Badge of Courage. I was okay with doing it, but you guys were like, nah. I yeah, it wasn't my favorite. Same. Well, Isaiah, why don't you give us a summary of what this book is about for those of us who has not have not read it? So basically, this book, um, the main characters of this book, uh, she basically committed adultery, and the meaning of the book, we don't know why, but she is being, she basically is put to public shame. She has to have a scarlet letter of an A on her chest the whole time, and then uh, about like bit more than halfway through the book you find out that or who she like who the father of the child is um and then basically it's about like the second half of it is about the father's name is dimsdale uh how he basically just has to deal with this sin and hide it because he um didn't want anyone to know that he also committed that sin Mm -hmm. and yeah, and then in the end, he does. But that's basically what the book's about. Yeah, Yeah. so basically the book revolves around four main characters. There's Hester, who is uh, the woman. Um, there is, and She's the woman and the mother of Pearl, who is another one of the characters. And Pearl is the daughter and the um, sin-born child. And then you have Dimsdale, who is the, town's, the uh, New England's town's pastor, And this took place back in, like, the early 1700s, I think. And uh, 
No, he's, he's a pastor. Yeah. He's a yeah. pastor for the town. And then you have Hester's old husband, um, who Chillingworth. is who is called Chillingsworth. Yeah. Okay. Well, guys, what were your what are your first thoughts on the Scarlet Letter? Well, I didn't like it much at first, and after reading the whole thing, I definitely wouldn't say it was one of the best books I've ever read. But it it got a little bit better, I, I'd say. Because, like, at the beginning, I thought it was really boring, the first few chapters. So, basically, how this worked was, for school, we had to read this, and they split it up over two weeks. So, we had two weeks to read it. He only and, finished the oh, first one-fourth of it in the first week, though. No, I finished the first chapter oh. or two. No, I finished the first two chapters okay. <laughs> in the first week, while Cooper read the whole book. A couple other people Same. read, like, more than half the book. I read the and, whole book. You yeah. listen, listen to, it. to it, but yeah. Okay, okay. I just and, want to give Isaiah props. He listened to the introduction, which is fifty pages of just the uh, dense I did, writing. I skipped that. I'm gonna be honest. I skipped, I skipped it. it too. Yeah, but Isaiah, listen to it. I just want to give him yeah. some. Hey, I'm gonna hear. I'm gonna say this right now. My mom was in the car with me while I was listening to the introduction while we were on our va, as Cooper calls it, a vacation. <laughs> in quotation marks. Um, but we. We had about two hours to our destination. We talked for 30 minutes in the beginning. Then she said, let's listen to a book for your, your school. We turn on the Scarlet Letter, and for an hour and a half on Audible, we listened to the Scarlet Letter's introduction. Yeah. Yep. That's tough. Yeah, it was well, horrible. I skipped it and then read the first two chapters for the first week. So I didn't know a lot about it when we were discussing it in class that week. And... Um, I had honestly thought it was going to be really boring and I thought it was already pretty boring because the way I thought about it and I kind of still think about a lot of it is it, it wasn't much moving and like it was, it was a hard to move along storyline. I felt like it was like, it was almost as if they saw a picture and the, and then they just described the whole picture and then the next chapter was a different picture and they described the whole picture and, and I felt like nothing really happened like within the chapters it was just describing a scene or really short scene or picture and then moving on and describing something else and like the kind of parts yeah. in between were kind of assumed almost no i'll give i'll give him i'll give uh, nathaniel hawthorne this it's a uh, i mean he's very good at descriptions you know uh what do you guys think about his style of writing though like the use of his words or something like that Besides the fact that me and Matthew's copies had a, f a million footnotes. It was definitely very descriptive in uh, parts, like extremely descriptive. It kind of reminded me of like, the Lord of the Rings, like how descriptive that is. Oh, yeah. I mean, and good thing for the him, but um, uh, J.R.R. Tolkien, like, in a comparison right now, he keeps things moving in his um, uh, description. He yeah. keeps things Fair moving enough. as he's doing it, but... Nathaniel Hawthorne, I'm gonna. He had a tough job to do here, but um, to like keep things rolling. But let me say this: yeah. this is not just... this is not a long book. Okay, no. this is a I mean... dense book. Like the he has twenty words a sentence, and they're like ten dollar words per sent. You know, like, like there's a hundred forty seven pages in this book. Yeah, forty seven. That's yeah, the Dover Thrift seven edition. Seven hours. Though. That is not a Dover Thrift edition. You don't have a Dover Thrift? Oh. No, I have a Kindle. Oh, well, we don't count that here. Um, on Audible, it's like seven hours. Yeah. It is seven hours on Audible, thanks to the stupid introduction. Uh, yeah, I was bored like, out of my mind listening to the beginning. So I was just kind of comparing him to Hemingway. I think we're going to talk about more about Hemingway next semester because we're going to do The Old Man in the Sea then. But Who? Ernest Hemingway. Um, uh, you guys uh, haven't read anything by him. I read The Old Man in the Sea of the Summer. He is known for his really sparse writing. Every single word has a purpose, and looking at it, you're like, this is terrible writing. He uses said way too often. He uses was way too often, but it's it's like a page turner, and it shouldn't be because he just keeps you engaged. Like that, like mm. the Scarlet Letter, it's easily skimmable. You could skim it. You could probably get everything. Like Matthew said, the first chapter is literally describing a flower. Like that's it. You could skim that easily. Yep. But Hemingway, if you skim something, you're you're gonna miss like a big part because. He keeps it so he keeps you so into it because the language is so sparse. And I thought that was really great, and I really appreciated that 
when, when you're reading the Scarlet Letter, you know? Like, if Hemingway wrote the Scarlet Letter, it would be 20 pages. But yeah, if probably true. Nathaniel Hawthorne wrote The Old Man of the Sea, it would be 400 pages. But I don't know it would be a good book. It would just be a different book, you know? But maybe it wouldn't be as powerful, powerful as The Old Man of the Sea. But I don't think that the Scarlet Letter would be as powerful even if Hemingway wrote it. Yeah. yeah. yeah speaking of descriptions, it's kind of funny how they kept describing Pearl as an yeah. elf child yeah. and then a wood nymph. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, guys, I'll let you in a little behind the scenes. Normally, we kind of outline the episode. I normally give a, I have some questions that I send out. The guys don't know anything that I'm about to say, but Isaiah, that was one of my questions. Who do you guys think like Pearl actually was? She's described as like an imp, an elf child, a demon child, uh, the black man's child, the you know, witch baby. You know, who who was Pearl? Isaiah, you can think... answer first. Uh, wait, Sorry, who man. was she? Yeah, like, like who? Or does what think... description best fit her? You mean, or something? Sure, like that? that's a, that's a better way to say it. I don't know. It's kind of weird because in the book, like they say, one moment she was very happy and laughing, next moment she'd be like very angry or laughing and jumping over someone's grave. Which is yeah, weird. I mean, it's it's like yeah, it's I I want to compare this to Matthew's dog Scout. We watched him over <laughs> the summer. I told my parents <laughs> multiple times he has an alter personality. One time, he'd be all cute, he'd be on his belly, I mean, back, and I would rub his belly, and then all of a sudden, he'd just go for my, go for my hand, you know? Mm-hmm. And then, or just go for my nose, that, that happened one time, but, um, you know, it's Or he'll just, just be, like, curled up, chilling, and then all of a sudden, he'll just decide to sprint around the room, like, yes, four exactly. times. Yes, that's the scariest and then go part. Back. I'm like, dude, <laughs> like, what? But, uh, the reason I say this is, is because I think she does have an alter personality, or something like that, because she can be... Like an imp, but she can be, you know, the book described as beautiful, fair, kind, yeah, all like, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Matthew, do you have How many to say, different like, the, things know? was she described as? Oh, I have like five right here, but I'm sure there was more than like 20. Yeah. You want to share those? Uh, so get... No, I have to look through the book, and that would take about an hour, so. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <true. laughs> uh, I was just, I was going to say, I, I was wondering, like, trying to think of what could cause that, and I was like, I, th- uh, I think it. I think it has something to do with, like, how the town treated her mom. Yeah. And how she had grown up as, and, like, honestly, they all hated her, as too. As an outcast. Kind of. yeah. yeah. she didn't really like people that much. Pearl, and people I mean. didn't like her. But, like, if everybody is. hated your mom, you would hate them, too, so. Oh, well, yeah. not just her mom, but her. They hated right. her, too. Yeah, they hated her, too. Yeah. But mainly because of her mother, if you get what I'm saying. Yeah. All right, we move past my first question now. Oh, um... So, as I mentioned, that we don't know the uh, the father's identity, but the main character, Hester, doesn't even choose to say that, does she? Do you think that she should have made known, like, in the very beginning, who the father was, or no? That's a um, really interesting question, and I am going to answer first this time. Sorry, guys. <laughs> but, oh, okay. um, I'll answer after. Yeah, you will. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> but, um, so, basically... It's interesting because I think she thought she was being virtuous or kind because the 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 father was Dimsdale the pastor, so right. she didn't want him to get into a lot of trouble. And like, you know, we she, never really know the reasoning behind it. It was she, very vague in that. I know, sense. I know. I'm just like assuming because like that would make yeah, sense. Yeah, why, yeah, definitely. Because they're not. And, she's not angry at him or anything. Yeah, she just she wanted to protect him, kind of, and like make sure like his reputation didn't get ruined because of her or anything and he was a pastor and they all liked his uh his sermons and stuff so she just didn't want to like discredit him or anything so she probably thought she was like being kind but it's interesting because later he starts feeling guilty and then like by the end of the book he just can or like honestly by like over halfway through the book he's on he's like consumed with guilt and he's like uh like yeah. feels so guilty all the time and he's yeah, always so worried about it and like stressing out and he's like let me interrupt you real quick to ask kind of like a follow-up yeah. question you can continue but like do you think she did him a disjustice even by not kind of sharing his identity with the world yeah that's because... what i was getting to okay. i think she did she almost made it worse for him because then he was so guilty and stuff but i don't think she was trying to well, make him feel guilty she was trying to help him she I wasn't think. trying to but she no, definitely but she... made it worse for him okay yeah because yeah, yeah she did make it worse for him yeah cause because it's definitely harder to keep in 
like to hide your guilt. And yeah, exactly. All that and shame. And then in the end, he dies from his guilt. So yeah, well, it definitely yeah. was worse for him. I think we'll so, talk about yeah. that a little bit later too. But it's funny. He Probably. kept he like tried to confess his guilt during church, and he's like, "I'm a bad man," and all the people yeah. like yeah. and the, um, they're like, "Oh, you're so listening. humble. You're so." He's like, yeah. "If you're a bad man, then yeah, what am I?" Yeah, this yeah. fair heart hearted <laughs> guy has my my heart has to be black as death, you know. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that was, that was pretty funny. I just kind of chuckled. If I read that, I was like, ha, 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 ha. Not really. Um, I plain out laughed. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you guys think was the point of this novel? The moral, the idea? What, what is the point of it? I feel like there's probably something about that in the introduction that I didn't read. Uh, yeah, there, there probably, probably was. Is. I forgot it the was, whole it's introduction. It's like so but... hidden. It was so hidden. Here, Tanner, I'm going to... I'm just going to outline the introduction right now for you. Okay, do it this in like – oh, listen, I'm going to challenge you to do it in 20 words. I don't think it's going to oh, be that geez. hard though. It's actually not. I could do it in three sentences. All right, let's do it. Let's hear it. It's more than 20 words. No, it's not. <laughs> so this guy picks up a book in a binder in a very dark – You're counting, um, aren't you? That's awesome. Yes, I am counting. <laughs> in a very dark, oh, come on, word skipped me, like storeroom type thing. And he finds a scarlet letter in it along with a, um, along with a manuscript which tells him the story behind it. And the book is about him retelling that story. Yep. Within the characters' minds. Nice. That was great. Yep. Maybe a little bit more. That was an hour words, and a half. But that, that was, was an good. hour and a half of that right there. I know. I know. Like, it was if so Hemingway bad. wrote the introduction, well, there wouldn't be an introduction in the first place, I guess, but it'd be so good. <laughs> and I think you guys will really, we'll talk about this a lot more in The Old Man of the Sea next semester. So, uh, anything else to talk about in the introduction? Oh, yeah. What is the point of this moral? We already said that. What's the point of this story? The moral? The idea? Find it. Don't hide your sin. Yeah. Fair yeah. point. I think we said the sinner who comes out into the open is better than the sinner who stays hidden. Yeah, I think that's... You can yeah, quote me he, on that, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> he made it He made it pretty clear that, like, Hester had it hard at first, or harder than Dimsdale at first, because her guilt was out and everybody hated her and everybody knew about it. But eventually she just got used to it. She got used to the Scarlet Letters. She, and the people got used to her. And, and the people got used to her. And eventually yeah. she worked her way back up in their society. They were uh, going to re- remove the Scarlet Letter. Yes. She found and, peace. Yeah. But um, Dimsdale had the guilt inside of his own head and his own heart. And he constantly felt it all the time and was constantly stressing about it. So especially with we'll, – we'll probably explain this in a second. But um, uh, Chillingsworth just made the yeah. guilt even worse. And – so he had it a lot harder than Hester did. So I guess he was kind of trying to say something kind of like Cooper's quote that <laughs> uh, that I already forgot. <laughs> he was kind of just trying hey. to say that if you just get it out right away, then it's better than just, like, keeping it in. Isaiah, were you trying to say something? What? Um, you... Oh, yeah, about, like, uh, for Dimsdale in the end. I am confused about this because at the end it says that he – like, some it says that some people saw the scarlet letter on his chest, and yes. some people didn't, and then stuff like that. Yeah, I'm I'm we talked about that. that. Let's talk about that in a second. I have a couple more questions before we hop in okay. at the end, which will be very, very juicy. Um, oh, cool, cool. So, character change throughout the story. So, actually, let's let's talk about Chillingworth for a minute. What did Chillingworth exactly do to Arthur Dimsdale? He uh, just put that salt in the wound. Like, oh, yeah. He rubbed it in there. He just made it worse for him, yeah. I don't, I don't know why. I don't think it ever just, says how that much. I can imagine Tanner, like, like I say something, and I'm just, like, keeping something hidden, and Tanner knows, and he just turns to me and winks at me. I can just totally see that. I feel like that's really kind of... <laughs> so, you, my mom... I love being that guy. <laughs> yeah, I know, you, I know you do. My mom, she said that she thought that Arthur Dimsdale was actually poisoned by Chillingworth. Do you think that he was actually poisoned? Hmm. Or was it more of a uh, well, kind doesn't of... Well, it say in the book that he like, yeah. was poisoned? But he could have been, I, I guess. I think it was like more like mental thing. Yes. Yeah. So I think one of the morals of this book is that mental sin 
can affect your outward appearance as well as your mind. Yeah, yeah, it can, can affect you physically, yeah. Because, like, Chillingworth turned into a monster, like, no joke. Mm-hmm. And Dimsdale turned into a ghost, you know? Yeah. I guess we could talk about the end now. What do you guys have anything? What do you guys want to say about the end before I kind of dive in? What's the questions? Nothing really besides what I already said well, about how I was confused about. Like, we should with the Alex start letter on Dimsdale's chest if it was there or not. That's a little bit later. I'll explain it a little bit. Um, so basically, um, Hester and and Dims. So basically, Dimsdale gets tortured by Chillingsworth, and he can't get himself. rid of the guilt and stuff, and so. He talks to Hester, and Pearl's there too. And then like it's a weird scene. But yeah, someone I can't remember which one of them brings up running away. I think Dimsdale brings up running away, right? Oh, I think it was and Hester. Hester does. Okay. Well, one of them yeah. um, asks the other if they should just run away, and they both agree to it. And then they ask Pearl, and she like gets mad at first, but then she agrees later. It's kind of weird. It's and weird. then um, they go back into the town. Well, at that point, that's also whenever they, like, it's very obvious who, like, uh, Pearl's father is, that it's Dimsdale. Before uh-huh. that, you could tell, but it was not obvious. Like, it was just, like, little hints along the way. Yeah, like, right. he, it doesn't really know right. until that scene that he's actually. Right. Yes. Right. You can, it's, I mean, the obvious person, and I'm sorry, this, the, even the not Observer. dumb person could have guessed yeah. it, but it's, yeah. it is kind of the first time. And then they go back into the town, and then they go... Why do they go on the stage again? They go back the on the scaffolding, stage. You mean? Because yeah. that's the one place where Chillingworth couldn't go, I think. Well, uh, it was basically to publicly show uh, right. their shame. Because and I think right. he was like, wrong. I should have stood with you when you had to stand up here, and now I'm going to do it. You know? Oh, that's yeah. right. Yeah, it was kind of... Yeah, he it does like it one other time po- in the middle of the poetic night. Little, when do yeah. when you guys think that Mr. Or Arthur Dimsdale decided to confess... Because I thought well, he was just going to run away and never tell anybody. Do you think so it's just when he knew he was going to die? He'd been wanting to confess for a while. Oh, duh. And then, yeah. like, he tried a couple of times, like I said, uh, while well, he was preaching one time in the middle of the night, he went on the scaffolding and, like, yelled really loud, hoping people would come out and see him, but nobody did. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, yeah. Idiot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but I think he'd wanted when, to, and then when he, like, got it into his head that he was going to leave, he just, like, so, I don't do know, think just bef- did it. Do you think before he got up on the scaffolding, he knew he was going to die? Or no? I don't know. I th- I mean, I don't think he knew he was going to die. I think he knew that he was... I but think he, he knew wa- that he was a... <laughs> he wanted to run away. Let Tanner speak. I think he's on to something. Yeah. I, I think. think he knew that he was a dying man, but I think he also knew that um, uh, God uh, might redeem him somehow through yeah. this. Yeah. That he would become a living man by doing this one last thing on his earthly. Yeah. Definitely. Um, and then he was probably hoping that be- if he does confess and gets that burden off his shoulders, he'll live because it'll go away. Yeah. So either way, he either shares and he goes away and goes away forever, or he shares and he dies. Yeah. Uh, one of our classmates said in class that she thought that Dimsdale was a coward to the end. Do you think so? I think he kind of was until, like, the very end when he went onto the scaffolding. But he's about to die, you know? Yeah. Look, yeah. I, I think I got you got to give him something. He wasn't... He wanted to tell them, and he tried, but he yeah, saw but... how much they loved him and how much... They yes. loved his sermons or whatever you call them. Do you like, think that he tried to convince himself, like, they love my sermons so much I can't let them see me? He didn't want to disappoint them, and he didn't, yeah, he didn't want them, he didn't want to, like, discredit their best example, I guess. Uh, yeah, but, I think it is more selfish than that, but I'll give you a Yeah, I mean, like, if you were in pain and you felt like you were about to die because of keeping that secret, and it was too much of a burden to bear, then... He definitely should yeah. have done it. I think he was like, yeah, like a coward. He was too afraid to do it. Yeah. Tanner, I'm not saying he wasn't a coward at all. I think he was. But I'm just saying I think it was a little bit like. Mm. No, yeah. Tanner, what about you? I think at the very end he was an example. An mm. example of um, what 
of what people should do because going out right then, like dying right then, I think that in God's plan, that would have been a lot more redemptive than otherwise because if he hadn't died right then, people wouldn't have known. Um, I don't think it would have stuck in people's minds as hard as it did. Like, we've got to um, repent of our sins. Yeah, what, that's, that's what a good that, point. Right when he died, what was that one quote? It was like, will I see you in heaven? He was like, oh, no. Yes. I was yeah. like, dang. <laughs> 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 Strong I don't, I don't. I don't know what he said. Is, you want Somebody want to look that up? Yeah, I'm looking no, I'm for look, that right now. I'm looking that right now, actually. Yeah, I'll pull out my copy, too. Okay, this is where I think... Oh, yeah, he, he says... I fear, fear that it may be when we forgot our God, when we violated our reference for each, each for the other's soul, it was thenceforth vain to hope that we could meet hereafter in an everlasting and pure reunion. So he's saying our sin was too bad. That's what he's saying here, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, we know that's not true, right? Yeah. He kind of self-deprecated himself there. Some pastor he was. <laughs> <laughs> so let me ask this kind of leads to my next question I think there are three ways that this answer could go and I think you can make a case for all of them so I'm, I'm interested to see what you guys think this will be our last question before we go doing our shout outs but wait should, think, are we going to talk about the A like Isaiah was saying yeah we'll talk about that yeah go ahead and talk about that now I guess what do you want well, well I was just I, I just found the so, part where it was yeah I, I mean I, while, while looking for that yeah I saw a part where he's like God has right. given me this sign on my chest so he ca- he actually is that symbolic or is that real? He he says it's there, but then no. later on it yeah. says people who were actually there. Some of them say that there was the scarlet letter on his chest. You some know, people you say know, that there wasn't. You know why so. I did, I think that is. I think that some people refused to saw it, and some people saw it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I also think that there's more proof for it because of Roger Chillingsworth. Roger Chillingsworth. Op- Chilling. There was this one part. Chilling. Yep. Chillingsworth. No. He when he opened up his breast <laughs> while he was like dead asleep. Yes. And then he uh, um uh, saw the breast and then he gasped and then he walked away. Yeah. No, I think. Yeah, it's I was. True. I was thinking of that. I don't I think this like, can actually happen in real life, and I think it's a great like a metaphor for real life. Yeah. Yeah. Mhm. Alrighty. So, my last question is: This a a story of redemption. B, a story of what not to do in life and what can happen to you if you do wrong in life. Or C, as my copy says, a romance. Which one of those <laughs> is It's it? not C. Okay. I think it's B. I know. My, it literally says a scar- the Scarlet Letter, a romance. That's what it says. <laughs> uh, what do you guys copies, think? Most copies <clears throat> I don't think any say of that. The, I don't think any of those. Yeah, mine oh, says a romance. Interesting. I, don't I think, think it's more B than any of them. I don't think any of those any of them. perfectly, but I'd say more B than any of them, yeah. Yeah. B and C. B and I mean, C, nice. A romance. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, oh. <laughs> so you don't think this is a story of redemption at all? No, no. I thought that it was. I went A and oh. B. Oh, okay. I don't know why I said B and C. Okay. No, I don't really think it's redemption. You know what? I don't... Okay, Matthew and Tanner, I'm going to set a timer. Matthew, you're going to get one minute to argue for your case, and Tanner, you're going to get one minute to argue for your case, okay? Alrighty, ready, Matthew? Okay. Set, go. So... We all know redemption comes from Jesus, and he redeems you and forgives you when you ask for it and when you believe in him. Um, At the end, Arthur Dimsdale decided that he had sinned too greatly. He and Hester had sinned too greatly and that they, along with Pearl, are all going to die, and they are unredeemable and unforgivable for what they've done, and that they're going to die and go to hell, and there's no chance of them going to heaven. And that's basically what he said before he died. So even though his saying it has no power over anything, that shows that he did not believe in Jesus in Jesus' redemption or in Jesus' forgiveness and therefore cannot be redeemed. Nice. 42 seconds. All right, Tanner. Ready? Yep. Set. Go. So the reason that I think this is a redemption story is because that God was weaving through their entire life um, a thread, a common thread that... um, Arthur Dimsdale was um, didn't want to repent of his sin. He um, just tried to hide it and uh, um, repent of it himself and not bring it to the light for everyone to see. 
and then Hester got it put out to the light. Um, it, it was hard for um, it, Arthur to watch Hester um, be in that um, situation <coughs> where he committed the same sin as her and to do that. And I think that um, God was just weaving this common thread between them that um, it, I'm going to, like, she, the piece that she has is the piece that I could have if I bring it out. Oh, what are you saying there, Bianca? Ooh. <laughs> Alrighty. <laughs> nice job, guys. Nice job. Well, anything else to say about Scarlet Letter before we do doing our shoutouts? No, nah, I think we mentioned everything. Yeah. We sh- I mean. I <laughs> mentioned everything. Well, maybe well, not. Okay. Mom, I asked mom maybe to help, maybe I asked mom to help me with this, you know? And she had, like, a whole two-page list of things I could, anyway. Hey, I love you, Mom. Um, all right, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to say the patron's name, then I will say a, one of you guys' names, and then you will say the person's name again, okay? What? Yeah, uh, just listen to this, no, okay? No, just say their right. name. If you're saying Isaiah, their name once. Isaiah, your grandparents. Thank you to my grandparents? You literally <laughs> just said their name. Tanner, Tanner, just... Lizzie. Okay. Thank Are you, you Lizzie. kidding me? Matthew, okay. Van Peppy and Wayla. Thanks, Van Pappy and Wayla. <laughs> uh, what, oh, Tanner, Isaiah's uncle. Thank you, Mr. Sebastian. <laughs> uh, Isaiah, my grandma. Thank you, Wait. Cooper's grandma. Alrighty, we love you guys <laughs> so much, and we'll see you next week for our first yep, ever thanks, mini-series. Ooh. Yeah, see you next oh, week. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Matthew. Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Keep on booking. <laughs>